starting out with just kind of the basics, what is interstellar matter? Um, it's basically just gas and dust and it forms structures like the ones that you're seeing in this image. So big clouds of dust and gas that glow in different colors or sometimes block light and so look very dark. Um, so this is all interstellar matter. Uh, the only thing that's not interstellar matter, I guess, is stars and uh, you know planets and dark matter, which we won't talk about in this class, but we'll talk about in Astronomy 123. But everything else is interstellar matter. It's just stuff between stars. And mostly this is in the form of gas. So of the gas, well, it's 90% per, uh, gas, 90% uh, hydrogen gas, 10% helium gas. So it's almost 100% gas. Um, so I guess some of these numbers should be like a smidgen smaller. And the average density of this gas is one atom per cubic centimeter. So it's very sparse. There's really not that much stuff out there um, if you look per volume. But at the same time, there is a lot of stuff out there if, because space is really big. So there's just a big volume to fill. And so if you look in our whole Milky Way galaxy, there's enough gas out there to make about 10 billion stars like the sun. Um, so the, most of the interstellar matter is gas, but the rest of it is dust. So about 1% is dust. Uh, we'll talk about the grains of dust in more detail later, but they're generally made of carbon and silicon at the core with a mantle of icy materials, water, ammonia, methane. Um, and they have an average density that's a little bit higher than the gas. It's about 100 to 1,000 um, per cubic kilometer. So I think this is like a million times more dense than the gas density. Okay, so in general, though, space is really empty. And I thought I'd just walk through this passage in your textbook because when I read it, it surprised me. And I already knew that space was pretty empty. Um, but their illustration here was, suppose you've got some like tube of air that goes from the ground to the top of Earth's atmosphere. And it's got, you know, some cross section, one square meter, okay. And then we take that same tube and we go from the atmosphere all the way to the edge of the observable universe, 10 billion light years away. It would still be the case that the tube in Earth's atmosphere would contain more matter than the tube stretching the rest of the way across the entire universe. So um, yeah, that hurts to think about a little bit. Uh, space is really empty and it's only, you know, that everything around us is a very dense portion of space. And I'm glad it is because it allows things to, you know, take the form of everyday life around us, which is actually pretty good, all things considered. So some of the structures that we see are actually more dense than that average. So the one atom per cubic centimeter, that's just an average over the entire volume of the, I think that quote was for the Milky Way. But for, um, for a given nebula like this, this can be a lot more dense than the average. And so for that reason, um, it interacts with light much more strongly than in directions where it's closer to the low density end of the range. So here in the nebulae, instead of one atom per cubic centimeter, it's 100 atoms per cubic centimeter. So that's the order that we're talking about. Um, this particular nebula is the Orion Nebula. If you look closely, you can see those three stars that are um, Orion's belt. And then this one, this blue star down here is Rigel. Betelgeuse, I guess, is shrouded up here somewhere. Um, and these nebulae take lots of different shapes and colors. And one of the things we'll do today is figure out why they look the colors that they do. Um, some nebulae have you know, really um, orderly shapes. So I guess I would call this an orderly shape where it, it looks like a kind of sphere of matter that's kind of tied together with filaments as opposed to the Orion Nebula, which was more fluffy and fuzzy and not particularly organized. And the reason is because these nebulae form in different ways. Um, some of them have been, you know, expanding away from each other for long periods of time and they're well mixed and they're, uh, they don't have any discernible structure. But structures like this uh, suggest that maybe it came from something that used to be much smaller that exploded. That's exactly what happened. So um, some nebulae like this one are supernova remnants. Uh, this one in particular is called the Crab Nebula. And so when the stars explode in a supernova, um, the, the 
material in their atmospheres gets blasted into space around them. And so often you'll find um, supernova remnants that are this kind of, you know, almost spherical shape. And this is, you know, how material in between the stars gets recycled. So stars form from this material, they explode and blast it out into space. And then from that material, new stars are born. So this is like, um, just very literally, the concept of dust to dust applies on the cosmic scale. 